All right. Let's go for it. Uh, as per request, um, I'm making this video. Here are the details. Um, well, sorry, I've been missing in action. As you can probably tell, I'm a little under the weather. I'm still recovering from a cold. Um, so I apologize for slacking on the videos, but it happens. Okay. Anyways, here's the problem. Um, I have some of the information. We're given R sub I is 9 over 20 of the I. And R sub I represents the area of the ith red sector. So I don't think they specify this in the question, but when I hear sector, I think sector of a circle. So these are sectors of my circle. And it looks like I have a circle. I have red, blue, red, blue, blah, blah, blah. They don't tell me anything, but I mean, this is just maybe a possible scenario. Uh, the area uh, of these actually is changing. Kind of a weird situation, if you think about it for a second. As I increases, the area of the red sectors are getting smaller, right? This is not quite accurate. Not quite accurate, but that's the situation. Um, and what we're told here is that uh, some blindly, well, they have maybe a veil over their eyes. Uh, they're picking a point in the XY plane that will determine um, whether they land in blue or red. And we're told that uh, if they land in blue, they win. And if they land in red, they lose. So specifically, what we're asked, so here's my point. If I pick this point in quadrant four right there, it looks like I win. But that's just an example. All right. I want to know what is the minimum number of red sectors such that the probability I win is less than 0.2. Less than 20%. Think about a second. I mean, <laughs> this is like an example of like whoever's making this game, this devious, conniving individual, right? They want to win, right? So they don't want whoever's playing to win. Like we put money in stakes here and, right? I mean, I'm making the game. I only want you to have less than 20% chance of winning. And I want the minimum number of red sectors. I want you to make you think. I mean, what's the sort of, I want to have as many red sectors uh, as many blue sectors as possible, right? And they think you have a good chance of winning. Hopefully you get what I'm trying to say there. Anyways, doesn't matter. I want to know the minimum number of red sectors uh, such that the probability of winning is less than 0.2. Well, I don't know anything about blue sectors. And um, if you think about it here, uh, this quantity right here is saying this is the probability that I get blue, right? Because winning corresponds to blue is less than 0.2. But I want to say something about red, right? I want to say something about red. So what I'll say here, that as you know, uh, <clears throat> using the complement, if I don't get red, or if I don't win, I lose. I win, I get blue. If I lose, I get red. So what we're saying here is that equivalently, and let me rephrase the question, I want the minimum number of red sectors, right? So I want to find, so for all of my red sectors, let's say i equals 1 to n of all of my red sectors, uh, I want to find the minimum n, the min n, such that, uh, such that uh, the probability, or actually 1 minus the probability that uh, I lose is less than 0 0.2. So let's rephrase that. Uh, this means if I lose, that means I get a red sector. Okay. So, well, let's just do some algebra first. So this is equivalent. This is equivalent, of course, to saying that uh, this is the probability that I lose is greater than 0.8, right? So what I did here is just bring this over, bring that over. I get this. How do I lose? I get in one of the sectors. We're finding n, uh, we have this many sectors right now, red ones. So equivalently, this is saying that, how do I lose? I either land on the first sec red sector, second, up to n. So I lose if I get in red sector one, or red sector two, or all the way up to the nth red sector. So this is what I want to look at. And once I solve this for n, I'm done. Well, hopefully this makes sense. 
hopefully this makes sense. Uh, let me write this one more way. Uh, equivalently, the sum i equals 1 to n of 9 over 20 to the i is greater than 0 0.8. So I recommend actually uh, that you have your TI multi-view calculator. I'm just about knowing computations. Um, I will just write them down because I did it already. So let's continue looking at this inequality. Inequality. So um, <clears throat> let's see what we have. All right. So what I want to do here is just use <clears throat> the formula for a geometric sum, find a geometric sum. I mean, hopefully you're saying, well, hell yeah, this is a geometric sum. Common ratio is nine over 20. First term is also nine over 20. So this tells me I have the following. So hence, what do we have? Uh, this finite geometric sum, con uh, well, of course it converges, it's finite adding up a finite number of things, is always going to be equal to the first term, 9 over 20, uh, minus nine of the common ratio, 9 over 20, raised to the what power? This is going to get confusing. It's always one more than the number that there are. How many are there? Well, there are n, I want to count these, n minus 0. There are n things, one more than n plus 1, so n plus 1 divided by 1 minus the common ratio, right? That's just the formula uh, for a finite geometric sum, which you're all very familiar with. By the way, it doesn't go anywhere. I mean, <laughs> it's probably the most important thing for at least the first two exams. Finite geometric sum or infinite geometric sum is everywhere. All right. I just need to solve for n here. So I'm pretty much just algebra now. Uh, what I'm going to do here is use algebra, right? So... This tells me that I factor this out, 9 over 20, uh, 1 minus 9 over 20 to the n divided by 1 minus 9 over 20, greater than 0.8. Okay, now multiply both sides by the reciprocal of this guy, all right? Multiply both sides by this reciprocal of this on both sides and what you're going to get here is I'm going to get 1 minus 9 over 20 to the n is greater than 0 0.9777 keeps going there's one other thing that uh, I'm going to go through that uh, is a common trick a common trap this will screw you up royally if you don't do this properly. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, be aware this is an equality, right? So let's solve for n. Okay, equivalently, I'm going to get this expression by itself, bring it to this side, uh, subtract 0 0.9997 over to the left side, uh, and I get the following. This is 0 0.0222, keep going, greater than 9 over 20. To the end. This is the part where you can fall into a trap. I need to take ln of both sides. Actually, this isn't the part yet. ln 0 0.022, etc., is greater than n ln 9 over 20. So this is the part. Be very careful here. Take a trip back in time to algebra where you thought you were good at math until you start studying for exam P and realize, damn it, I know nothing. How do I deal with an inequality? When, or namely, when do I switch the sign of an inequality? When I multiply or divide by a negative or when I take reciprocals of both sides? Those are pretty much the only time. I want to divide both sides by ln of 9 20th. Is ln of 9 20th positive or negative? ln of a fraction less than one greater than zero is always negative. Flip the inequality here. This tells me that ln 0 0.022 blah 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 ln 9 over 20 is 
fact, greater, or sorry, less than n. Flip the inequality. I have to flip. This is negative. This is negative. This number on the left side, by the way, is a 4.76 with some other crap. So n must be at least 4.76. We can't have fractions of red sectors, which means n is 5. So that's my answer. Be aware, whenever you divide, whenever you take ln of a fraction, this comes up frequently for exam P. I made mistakes simply because I wasn't aware enough to realize that ln of a fraction is negative. Be aware of this. ln of a fraction less than 1 greater than 0 is negative. All right, tell me what you think. Uh, thank you for subscribing and like the video, please.